Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Matty B, mixing things back up again on basically whatever week it is of lockdown or quarantine. And hopefully the video and audio come out better this week. But we're going to be mixing stuff up. Not a lot of news in terms of sports being back, but there are some proposals that are out there. And I mean, I don't even know if we talked about it last week with the NFL, but one of their proposals was to put a face mask into their helmet, which I thought is just ridiculous. Matt, what are your thoughts on that? I thought it was ridiculous, but I also thought if if people really are that ca- that cautious and wanting to to be preventative, then if that's something that they want to do, and they're because I would think that it's not just the face mask; they would also have to end up wearing like some kind of arm like sleeve or leg sleeve to basically go with full body protection. And if that's something that they want to do and it makes you feel safer to, to perform, then by all means do it. I don't think that they should force you to have to wear one. But if you if you choose to do it because you want to be you want to take precautions, then I, I think it's fine. I would say that it has to be 100 times harder to breathe. How many guys do you already see on the sideline getting IVs? and things to get them hydrated. How many more would you see if they had to wear face masks or other coverings in the heat? Because that's going to be when this returns. And I see it as like a two-step proposal. Realistically, the NFL, they put out their normal schedule. So it's not like they're moving all their games to the south or whatever, hoping that the heat limits the spread and or they're not putting them in all of them into domes or whatever. It's kind of like anything goes. So there's not really any other plan except for, oh, well, we might make the guys wear this, even though it's definitely going to hurt the play on the field. And we don't know going like, how how would that affect them going forward? Like having it tough to breathe, would that cause other injuries? Like could you have lack of oxygen and pull a hamstring? I don't know. I think you could that that could be something that you could possibly see happen. Um, you know, I, I think we're with as much time as we've had away. I think you're definitely going to see the the potential risk of, of more injuries come up because you have people even even the, the people that are in the best shape, uh, you know, working working out and doing stuff at home. I don't know that it's the same as being with with their their team affiliated strength coaches and conditioning with their teams. So I think you're probably, you're more than likely going to see a higher rate of, of injuries once we are back because of the amount of energy that people are going to be expending. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Uh, trying to look for some good news. I tried to see if there were any updated videos for Ben Roethlisberger, but I'm not seeing any him actually throwing the ball from last week. So, I mean, you have guys coming back from injury possibly playing in a tougher environment just based on the equipment. But, I mean, we'll wait and see what happens. I've talked about it, and I mean, basically, if you look at the description for the show this week, we're going to go through the other sports. I'm still waiting for an actual sports league to open up. I think we had we had NASCAR. That's a little bit more controlled. Everyone has built-in social distancing. I mean, outside of your crew – you're in the car the entire time until like at the end or whatever. So you really don't have a way to interact with other people in NASCAR. So it's kind of like its own built in test run. If they were to bring a bunch of fans in or whatever, but we talked about it with UFC, they test the fighters. The NHL proposal is to expand the playoffs And I'm bringing this up first because it absolutely screws the Pittsburgh Penguins out of a first-round bye. Because for whatever reason, and I don't know what their reasoning is, they made the cutoff as the top four teams are in the playoffs. And so I'm looking at the standings here. They have um, 
Actually, we'll just organize it by conference. It'll be a little bit easier. You have the Pittsburgh. The Penguins come in at fifth. They have 40 wins. They're one win behind the Flyers at 41 and the Capitals at 41. So whenever they drew this imaginary line, they absolutely screwed them. And you could even look at it like I don't understand why they're trying to get the 24 teams. Is Were they looking at how many teams had 70 points or whatever, and then that's where they made their cut. I don't know because they could very easily have just had the Pittsburgh be the last team with a bye and then had like a round robin with the other three. If you look on the West, it's a little bit more of a mix. Like Edmonton's down, they have 83 points, and then Dallas is 82. So even the cut there, you're only set one point separating them. It's just a really weird cut if you're actually looking at the standings and you say, okay, yeah, that, that team deserves to be in over, like, like why does Edmonton get the, the bye and not Dallas? Do they have an e- even schedule? Like, I, I'm not seeing the cutoff here. By the looks of it, if I'm doing my math correct, it looks like Edmonton played three more home games. So they're one point up, three more home contests, whatever. Like, like, I don't understand why you would make that cut. I wonder if Pittsburgh faced a similar. Now, it looks like they have the exact same amount of home games as Philly, and I'm adding these up in my head as we go. But it's almost like, okay, I'm going to look at this, and it's their fault Pittsburgh went 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. You win one of those, and you're right there. And then you force the NHL to kind of come up with a different strategy. But I'm still baffled at why they thought some of these teams deserve to be in. And if you're just taking a look, they're letting in most of them. So, like, why? You're only eliminating. Let's see how they cut this. So, you're only eliminating Buffalo, New Jersey, Ottawa, and Detroit from the Eastern Conference, four teams. But yet you have Montreal sitting there at 71 points. They're seven points behind Florida, and they're going to get in? Like, you could easily cut that team out. If you're trying to actually protect the teams, Montreal has no reason to be in the playoffs. It's a joke. That's my, that's my final say, is I'm looking at this, and I looked at it earlier, and it annoyed me. Because there's a clear divide between Montreal and and Pittsburgh, and now they have to meet in, what is it, a best of five? Like, they're going to go ahead and do a round. It looks like they're trying to get a home game, or I guess the home round put in Pittsburgh, where you they would just play all of the games there. And okay, I like I, maybe the Penguins are trying to make up revenue or whatever, and they, like, I just don't think they're going to offer to play an extra round. Like, you know what, guys, we've thought about it, and we will play that extra round against Montreal, because I think that's who they would draw. It's just weird, and I hate it. Because if you look at it, I mean, even the teams that made it, in the West, it's a lot closer. Chicago's at 72 points. Uh, Arizona's right above them at 74. But it, it's still, it's like, okay, why Why do some of these teams get a bye, but now Dallas has to play a crappy Blackhawks team? Did they look at markets? Is that what they did? Did they say, okay, Chicago... And Montreal, we definitely want them in the playoffs. Because that's what I feel like they they made this too big. Like, you just tell them, like, okay, guys, yeah, it sucks. But your your team has a, a losing record. You're not in the playoffs. They could very <laughs> easily have looked at that and made that the cutoff. Like Arizona, 33 and 37. Chicago, 32 and 38. You're out. You are out. You don't have a winning record. Like You can't tell me you deserve the Stanley Cup or at least a chance to play for it. It's a shortened season. It sucks. Your team has a losing record. You are done. Like, I am sorry. And then same with the East. Like, Montreal, 31 and 40. Give me a break. Florida is barely above 500. That would have been the other team if, you, if I was trying to cut two teams out. But you could at least cut one more out. Do they, do they think, okay, well, it has to be an even round? Like, I just don't know the, the thought process. Because if you're trying to limit games, you're now potentially adding 10 more games 
to keep those two teams in with piss poor records for no reason. Like it doesn't have to be an equally balanced thing. There's no predetermined television deal that's, that say, hey, you have to have this many extra games. There just isn't. And now you're putting those extra teams at risk for no reason. And I want NHL to come back. It's just dumb. I mean, what's your take on it? I don't know. I, to me, they have. I don't know that where you see it as a revenue generator and which cities get to have and which ones don't. I think there's a bigger scheme in all this too that, that has to be explored, and it's which states are going to allow you to be able to have to host the contests as well. So I think when you're looking at, at even some of these destination places, like I'm surprised that they would even consider Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania as a whole to be a place where they're going to be hosting some of these games because it just seems like Governor Wolf here um, is really gun shy with wanting to allow people to, to get back to normal. And so I, I think Pennsylvania is going to be one of the states that it's going to take a lot more, t- lot more time to o- get opened back up as a result of of the complications from COVID. You know, I, I think with some of those other places, like I think we pointed out before the show, you know, some of the, the Southern states right now that are going to be opening at a, at a quicker rate would be better candidates for some of these playoff to be the hosting cities, just because they're going to be able to allow even on a, a small scale spectators to the games and, and to be able to get some of that stuff going too. And I might as well even we might as well circle back around because I don't even think I hit on it in detail. I'm gonna throw out they ha- they listed on the NHL website a bunch of cities that are under consideration, and I'm just gonna throw out the can- Canada ones first because I'm not familiar on their policies with coronavirus or whatever. So Vancouver, Toronto, Edmonton. So there's three, but then to your point, you have Pittsburgh, which is heavily locked down. You also have Columbus, which was one of the first states that did the lockdown in Ohio. You have Los Angeles, which still has some of the stricter rules where they were even saying that some of their colleges wouldn't even be back on campus. And so those are the big three. You also have Chicago, Dallas, Las Vegas, and Minneapolis which like I told you before the show, I'm looking at this Carolina, they're going to be the sixth seed. Why aren't they getting a chance to host? If everything's opening back here. And if you look at the numbers, I think North Carolina has lower numbers compared to a lot of the States that are listed here. Like, why not? Why are you trying to throw it? You're going to go ahead and list every other city in that division. You have, uh, Pittsburgh on here, Toronto, Columbus. Those are the teams you just skip Carolina. It makes zero sense to me. And then I like they have to just be looking at city size, which to me, if you're talking about player safety, don't look at city size. The original proposal was that they were going to go out to the Dakotas or somewhere that didn't have a lot of cases and have the tournament there. Go back to that. If you're not going to let fans in, who cares? <laughs> If they say that the warmer weather is going to limit the spread of the virus, go somewhere where it's warmer. Why are you going to play them up north? It just makes zero sense to me. It's almost like they they see an opportunity to bring the sport back and they want to try to get as many games in at the biggest venues as possible. And that's just speculation. But to me, if I'm looking at the facts, that's exactly what is laid out here. They're not really concerned about the safety because you want to be flying people into the biggest cities, LA and Chicago. I mean, the only one they threw out was New York. They just wouldn't. If you cared, you wouldn't do that. That's my thoughts. Do you have anything else on the NHL proposal? No. Uh, We can go to the NBA one. They're going the opposite direction, and I don't know how far along their proposal is, but they're looking to play their games at Disney World in Orlando where they have like the ESPN worldwide complex of sports, which is a smart move by ESPN because they paid all that money for those NBA rights. You could limit employee interaction because I would imagine 
that those courts are set up to just have cameras already there. Multiple angles, probably you could even set up fixed cameras in their own environment. They could be testing it right now. And you might not even have to have any tech guys in the building because they might be wired to another building right down the road. You get a couple guys in that are, that are doing the uh, camera switching and that's it. Like there might need to be zero of the TV execs on the court anywhere else. I mean, like you can do like your interviews or whatever, but I, I just don't sit, think that they're going to have anyone down there doing the on-court interviews. And why would you even risk that? That's just my thought anyway. But if you're trying to get these back, it's a great look. Do it at Disney. They're going to get free advertising for whenever they decide to reopen or whatever. And even if they don't, it's still going to keep Disney fresh in people's minds. Like, hey, here's our resort, blah, blah, blah. We're doing all this down here. And it comes down to, are you going to be able to lock in the players? I think it was Damian Lillard from the Port Portland Trailblazers. He came out and complained saying that his team didn't have a chance to make the playoffs. They're only a couple games back. Well, he just, I, th I think it more came on the lines of if they set it up to where the teams didn't have an equal opportunity to, to get into the playoffs or to get a higher seed for the playoffs, then he wasn't interested. Like, he was still going to be supportive of his teammates, but he wasn't going to play. And to that end, I mean, if you're if you're on a team that they're they're going to shorten your season, and it limits your ability to, to to have a higher seed, then it it may not be something that you're interested in, in doing and putting yourself at risk for. While I was while you were talking, I was thinking about this too. Every year at the beginning of the basketball season, I feel like there's always a handful of games that are played on a on a naval uh, carrier. That would be a way for them to get some of the games in too, to be able to to use one of those those larger, uh, like the Navy, bigger ships, and play some of the games out there. That way, you know you're socially distanced. You just have the players there, isolated in the middle of nowhere. And they're getting their games in. Problem solved. Well, that's usually college. I don't know how many pro guys would sign off on playing outside because that's been my proposal for a while I would like to see them mix in some street ball games because that to me that would be a reason to tune in right now everything's so I, it's almost like it's the same that there are no environmental impacts in basketball I mean NHL does like the outside rink every once in a while that draws in a bunch of viewers the NBA is the only sport that doesn't Baseball has outside. You have different parks, different um, what altitudes that affect how the ball flies. NFL, of course, you have some domes, some outside snow and things like that. The NBA doesn't have any of that. So, yeah, I would love to see them do a couple games like that, and they really could. But for whatever reason, they really like that controlled indoor arena type, and maybe it's just because they know if they're switching hoops, you see with college all the time, some guys just it throws off the shooting because that depth whenever you have like different sights behind the hoop maybe they're just trying to keep it all consistent to improve scoring to help people tune in I don't know but I, I would be all for having them mix it up but I'm looking now to see and I couldn't find the actual proposal so you might be right that it might have been a hypothetical. I thought, based on his comments, that they had sent out a proposal. And how many games does the NBA usually play? Is it 82 just like? Like a million. I think it's 82. So right now, the like the box, just looking at it, they played 65. So and so like, I really don't think they're just going to throw in a two-game regular season, which then would effectively screw the trailblazers because like at that point it's almost like, okay, that like, that's not going to matter. You'll have a chance to win out and possibly make it. Uh, how many games are going to throw in? I don't think that they really need to, because it goes back to my NHL argument. You have a losing record. You were done. Portland, you're 29 and 37. You're out. The Grizzlies, same thing. Like they're in the playoffs right now. They're 32 and 33. 
okay, let's just cut it there. That's what I would say if I was in the owner's meeting. And I saw Mark Cuban, as I'm looking this up, he said that the only way he'd sign off on it is if all 30 teams were included. And it's like, why? Unless you're doing a single elimination play-in tournament, and this is my proposal that I'm making up right now, because all these teams are losers, Matt. They're losers, and they don't deserve to be in a series. Because if they did a five-game series like the NHL did, it would be so boring. No one would watch. I mean, I guess people would watch because it's the only sport on. But it would immediately make the other sports return. Because right now, the only team that has been mathematically eliminated is Golden State at 15 and 50. I think they had time to get some of their guys. I don't know how what their injuries were. But go ahead and take what is there left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven teams. Just do a single elimination tournament. Like give Portland the bye so that it's almost like an eight-team tournament and do a single elimination tournament. Whoever wins that single elimination tournament does a, does a three-game series with like the eight seed as the final team to make it. Like, don't throw out the entire regular season for the teams that actually have winning records because I think, yeah, both eight seeds have losing records. So just do that. Uh, looks like they both have seven. So the, whoever's right there in the nine seed, they get a bye, and it's a single elimination tournament. Like, could Golden State have everyone healthy come in on fire and just make it as an eight seed? That'd be awesome. Make the playoffs much more exciting. Like, why not? If you're going to just do that, instead of just having a regular season where they're already eliminated, why would they play? Makes like, sense. to Dame's point, you, you're close to a playoff spot. You're two and a half, three games back, three and a half maybe, I forget what it was. Like, you can play your games and actually make it. Gold State has zero reason to even return. You're just putting yourself at risk for what? Nothing. So just do a single elimination tournament. It would almost be like a NCAA experiment because they've talked about doing an in-season tournament next year as part of the proposal as a return with a shortened season, but they put that other tournament in. Like just do a single elimination tournament, like I said, and have and crown a winner. It gives some of these losing teams a hope, like a chance to make it. So that's my last thought on that. Do you have anything on them? Nope. I don't see how else you would do with 30 teams. Like, if you try to do, like, a best of three with every team, and then, what, the one seed gets a buy? Like, it's just messy. Unless you got rid of conferences for this tournament, and then you just seeded from there. But again, it's like, how, how do you decide how many games each round gets? And does anyone get a buy? Things like that. Just do a single elimination with all the losers. People will tune in because there's no sports. And if you're doing it back to back at in ESPN Studios or whatever, you I don't know how many courts they have there, but you could have two games on staggered at a time. Have one on ABC, one on ESPN, start them an hour apart. So if one game's a dud and the second half you just switch back to the other one or whatever. And you just have a weekend full of basketball. And then the next weekend is the three game play in tournament. And then the, while that's all going on, your top seeds are having a chance to practice, maybe play some skirmishes there or whatever they need to do to get in shape. So it's not a crummy, out of out of sync matchup for them. But you're not letting the other teams play, so really the only team that would have any game experience would be the eight seed taking on the one seed. And instead of having Los Angeles just blow out Memphis, maybe Memphis gets a, gets a game up or two because they came back earlier. Might make it more exciting. But that's my proposal. We'll see what happens. These proposals just keep getting pushed back. We're already at the end of May. Nothing has happened. But so, it's, impor- it's important that they're having because the more discussions that you have, the more you're pushing different points, the closer you're getting to actually having something come into play. You know, to me, looking at yesterday and a lot of the, the places that were doing things for Memorial Day, as as people are, are gathering and doing more things and you're not seeing the increased numbers of infected patients and, and people spreading COVID, 
I think you're going to end up seeing more places be willing to open stuff up and get things get things going again. Yeah, once well, I've been saying all along, once something opens up, everything's going to start going again. And so that's why you don't want to get into any weird situations with like I, I think you play the playoffs and that's it for some of these sports. And it's almost like a test run for the NFL to see what's handled well and where you can go for football. And then they can adjust their other seasons next year, like the NBA and NHL. They've already had out like shortened proposals or maybe starting at Christmas or whatever. So your guys are still going to get a rest. I actually found the rest of Mark Cuban's proposal. So he says, which I already hate it, they're going to play five to seven regular season games. So like Lillard complained about not being able to make it. He would be able to make it because that's enough to get them in. He says that actually only two teams at the beginning, Minnesota and Golden State, would be the the two teams that can't make it right now. So there would be two teams. I was just making sure I read that right. And who cares? They, he's going to expand it to 10 teams. But again, are you giving a team a bye? They're, they're doing a play and it looks like a best of three or a single game. Just get rid of all that crap. Like, why would Minnesota or Golden State even show up to do that? If I was the owner, I'd say, like, yeah, you know what? We have no chance. I'm not putting my guys at risk. Have fun. Like, what are they doing? They're splitting the revenues. What revenues? The TV revenue? Like, is someone going to watch that game? Uh, it'd be an interesting experiment to see if teams would watch. But they're not even, they don't even play those games on TV anyway. They only usually play the top couple teams each year on television. The other teams you never see. Like, you'll never see Charlotte Bobcats, like, on ABC. Normally. You just never would. Unless they're playing, like, LeBron or something. So, I, I hate his proposal. Like, why? Um, it throws away the value of the whole season. That was his concern. My concern is you take that into account and make all those losers play a tournament. My proposal is the best. They have a chance. It's a single game, which brings excitement. They all have losing records, Matt. So it doesn't matter. And I hate to keep talking about this, so I'm done. Maybe I'll just go on a tweet storm this weekend and I'll just blow it out and just like keep talking trash. Because I like whatever, you're not getting rid of the regular season if it's a single game only the losers play in. And then you're not playing seven like however many games that is. Like seven extra games per team. Like that's just crazy. Uh, Major League Baseball, they're never gonna play Matt. I'm convinced because their latest proposal is to cut salaries from their best players. Why? Who would sign off on that? I mean, like if I'm looking at it and they tried to do the player split and then they started to throw out the higher number because like last, last week we talked about the narrative from the owners is that they're going to be losing every money, every game they play. Because there's not going to be fans in the stadium. But you know what, Matt? They also don't have to pl- pay vendors and all these other operating costs. Did they factor that into how much money they're losing? Are they still paying those people? Will they be well, there? St. Louis committed to paying those people. At least the Cardinals did. So I don't know if the other for other teams are following suit. But I did read that and I thought that's that's just... That's why... That's one of the reasons why there are times where I would like the cards to spend some more money to try to upgrade some positions and things like that. I understand that at times that's why they're not willing to commit that money because they're also willing to to step up and do the right thing and help people that are depending on those paychecks. So I thought that was a good thing for them. And I'm not trying to knock what they're doing. I just think that when you're looking at how much revenue they bring in like St. Louis brought in $383 million last year. That's enough to pay them and then, and then not have them show up at the stadium for no reason. Yeah. Like they're not going to be losing money this year if they don't bring them in to pay them extra. You know what I mean? Like just based on their revenues last year, they each team has enough to just play with no fans and then don't, 
have any of those stadium costs. You just pay the unemployment or whatever. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked if it came back. But right now, whenever you're talking about the owners complaining about them not being able to do better than a 50-50 cut, and then the players are taking cuts from there, like, why would you show up? Just hold out. They're either going to pay you or they're not. If you go to see a bunch of scrubs because your top 10 players aren't showing up, you might as well just be watching minor league baseball, Matt. I mean, in all honesty, like, what would you, like, why would you tune into that? It's almost like every game would be the Pittsburgh Pirates versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. They never pay their top players, so they're all on other teams anyway. <laughs> it's not exciting. People wouldn't tune in for that. I don't even know why people still go to the stadium, even though I went to a game last year, so I can't knock myself, but. But optimism. Throw out a ridiculous proposal. Let it get talked around. Eventually, both sides will come together. And, and I would bet that before it's all said and done, all it takes is one other major sports team to figure out how to get playing. And you'll see the other one start to fall in line. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking through the other proposals. I mean, they're already starting to threaten some of the teams, like the California ones. Like the A's are going to start making salary cuts and furloughing staff. So are the Dodgers. That's the same state where the NHL is thinking of having their playoffs. Like, yeah, good luck, buddy. Like, I know that that's not going to happen. I'd be shocked if they just like, if Major League Baseball and basketball, they're they're just like, avoiding LA. And then the NHL just starts up there for like random reasons. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're back, baby. <laughs> it makes zero sense to me. <laughs> and uh, Kang, the Kang show. Everyone loves him. He uh, he was suspended by a Korean baseball organization for multiple drunk driving offenses. So he has 300 hours of community service. That's my last baseball tidbit for the show. <laughs> he has to sign with the team, though. Because he was released by the Pirates, and so he's trying to get back to the Korean baseball since they're actually playing right now. And he has to sign and then do 300 hours of community service. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I guess he has to be suspended a year too. So you have to do the community service, you're signed for a team, and then he'll be back next year. I wonder if he'll just make a run at the Major League Baseball game. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't really have anything else this week. Like I said, we're waiting on things to ha- open up. There were some... Uh, I did see you sent me the the comments from Michigan's president about not having uh, football games if the students aren't on campus. And actually, a lot of media, of course, took that out of context, Matt, because they were reporting that he said, unless all students were back on campus, they wouldn't play games. He never said that. I read. I got the email. He had just said that if students aren't back in any capacity, they're not going to have football. But I think most campuses already have a thing in place to get student, at least researchers and things on campus. So it was really weird that a lot of the bigger newspapers wrote that he was saying that all students had to be back on campus because that still makes that, that's like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Because I would imagine that most universities are going to do like a hybrid where if you're doing labs, you have to be on campus. But if you're just taking freshman lectures, why would you have to be there? Like it makes zero, makes zero, like zero sense. So you're not going to have like the full libraries and things open. I saw some were saying that students, that if they did that, they went to a hybrid approach and I, I forget who, but someone was doing a study where if they went to a hybrid approach, they would be able to give residents that needed to be on campus their own dorm room to do like the social distancing thing because you'd be able to split it where students that are mostly taking lectures and stuff, then they would be converted to online. And I think that that's a fair proposal and a lot of universities will open up following that same that same plan. Students that need to be there get their own room. Anyone else, then they can kind of fill up as needed. Maybe they do like they drop by class where if you're a senior, 
and they have empty rooms, you can come on in or if you have your own apartment or whatever, they'll give you that split option because I've taken classes like that in the past where you can go to class, but if not, it's recorded and you can just watch it online and you just sign in with your email or whatever and it checks it off that you've been there, like you've watched the class. And so like, what's the difference? So I saw that was taken out of context, kind of annoyed me because it is almost like they're looking for a way to try to bring football down when that was definitely not what was intended. So anything else you have? Nope. Just stay safe. Stay active. Yep. We'll see what happens. Like I said, we're going to keep doing shortened shows. Things just keep it a little bit easier. But you can go to southboundsports.com. Still working on some stuff since we have no sports, trying to get stuff in place for the start of football season. So definitely tell your friends. We're still doing the show. We had some big views the last couple weeks on Facebook, and even just downloads were back up. So we appreciate it. Let us know if there's anything you want to talk about. We're still doing some extra plans, working on stuff that we'll be following back up. But tune in next week, and maybe we'll share some more details. So thanks for listening, and stay safe.